And I'm Jordan Vandenberg. Thank you for joining us. Well, we've been talking about it. I'm sure you've been talking if about you've it. you've been outside, yeah. you're talking about it. <laughs> Everyone's talking about it. Some tri-state students are getting a jump start on college and ultimately saving you parents out there a little bit of cash. I know my parents appreciate it when I did it, that's for sure. Well, sometimes the grass isn't always greener on the other side. An Idaho woman faces felony charges after she, get this, cut down her neighbor's bushes. Chris Greenfeld says she trimmed 10 bushes bordering her property line while her neighbor was on vacation. Police are now charging her with a felony charge of malicious injury to property. The state agreed to drop the charge if she pays $10,000 to replace the trees, but she refuses. She says half the trees are actually hers, and besides, they're blocking her view of the river. 6.34 now at this hour. Henderson County parents, teachers, and kids, I'm sure you're getting up early for the first day of school. As you go back to class this morning, teachers have been making their final preparations for the school year. What was supposed to be a fun-filled day at Six Flags turned tragic yesterday outside St. Louis. A multi-vehicle accident involving two buses and a big rig killed two teenagers and injured dozens more. New this morning, an Evansville community comes together to remember the man shot and killed just days ago at Bellmead Park. 631 now, we do continue to follow breaking news this morning out of Evansville. Vanderbilt County Dispatch tells us one person is dead after a forklift accident at Boots Manufacturing. Dispatch tells us the call came in around 530 this morning. We're told Vanderbilt County Coroner Annie Groves has been called to the scene and will certainly bring you the latest information on this breaking news story as soon as we get it. Welcome back to Daybreak. Your time is 514. Well, I love this story coming up. Well, most of you out there realize how important social media networks like Facebook and Twitter just continue to grow. Now it appears to be spreading to the animal network. And a bunch of you probably thinking, what in the world is this about? Well, this is actually really amazing. A dog in Georgia is gaining popularity, not because he's just absolutely adorable. Well, that's one of the things, but because of his Twitter page. Believe it or not, James Bond the Beagle, that's his name, has his so, very own Twitter page. And his owner, Sloan Kelly, set up her dog's Twitter account about a year ago. She says it has really opened her eyes to how social media can connect pet lovers. Apparently, it's a growing trend because she and James Bond recently went out to the first International Bark World <laughs> Conference in Atlanta. And in case you didn't know what that is, it's a social media convention for dog lovers. What else? I like it. I mean, I like it too. I think I'm going to have to get my dog Chloe her own little Twitter page, maybe. <laughs> well, if it's any reflection of how you tweet or how infrequently you tweet, mm -hmm. it'll probably get one tweet by every three or four weeks. Probably, or so. yeah. As opposed to me, it's like every five seconds. Oh, I know. See, it's so funny because we are so on opposite ends of the spectrum. I think that some parts of you know, I just think that maybe I'm not really a part of my generation because <laughs> it took me forever to like jump on the Facebook bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I really enjoy our face, our Daybreak Facebook page. Oh, yeah, I'm I all about too. that. But the tweeting part, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of just, I don't know. You just leave it to me. I, I missed the boat on that. Yeah, it's, it's all good, though. It's different strokes for different folks. Indeed. An inflatable bounce house, a grill, and a life-size Elvis Presley doll. These are just some of the things former Illinois governor's belongings up for auction this morning. As sweltering temperatures are expected near triple digits for the third day in a row, imagine dealing with the heat while in rubber boots and laying concrete. Well, that's a reality for tri-state construction crews. Some doctors from all over the country came to Evansville over the weekend to sharpen up their life-saving skills. This hour, Evansville police say a man dressed as a woman is arrested and jailed on a prostitution charge. The Senate confirms Elena Kagan to the U.S. Supreme Court, making her only the fourth woman ever to serve as justice. A late night basketball game turned into violence overnight at Bellmead Park in Evansville. News 25's Matt Barber is live in the newsroom with all the late breaking details. Matt, what do you have for us? Well, you often hear of those sappy love stories that I happen to like, where people <laughs> say it was destiny that brought them together. At least you can admit it, that's for sure. This next story may help as evidence of that. Get this one, a Texas couple born on the same day, delivered at the same hospital by the same doctor. They get married 23 years later. How about that? But Matt Johnson didn't meet his wife, Samantha Green, until high school. As they got to know each other, they realized they had the same birthday when it was their moms who figured out they were born at the same hospital and delivered by the same doctor. The couple says it was meant to be. Lovely. I love stories like that. I mean, I, I'm surprised that Hollywood hasn't made a, uh, a movie or something about this. It seems like Nicholas Sparks, the guy oh, who wrote the This has the Nicholas notebook. Sparks written all over it. I know, it. <laughs> yeah. And I'm really ashamed that I know that. I'm really ashamed. That's okay. that Don't be ashamed. A lot a of people bit. like that. The Notebook, Message in a Bottle. Of yeah. course, I have DVDs of all of them. <laughs> but that's neither here nor there.
Tracking the economy now, specifically home sales, or lack thereof. New numbers show U.S. home sales plunged 27% nationwide in July, a record drop. News 25's Matt Barber is live in the newsroom with more on how the local housing market is faring. Matt. Kentucky State Police are investigating a hefty theft from a Union County gas station. Troopers tell us it happened at the Gateway One Stop. Officers say a store employee advised them a safe containing around $30,000 was gone. The park's open at 5 in the morning until 10 at night, but we learned that could soon all change. The saying goes, misery loves its company. Well, the downright dangerous heat wave hitting the tri-state is also hitting other parts of the country.